Wonderful. Do you see these beautiful children? They would like to sing for you, but they're a little bit shy, so we need everyone to please take their seats and everyone to give them your full attention. I thank you so much. And we're beginning the program.
of the love of God, of the love of God, brightly within, brightly within, your radiant heart, your radiant heart, let the flame, let the flame, of the love of God, of the love of God, brightly within, brightly within, your radiant heart, your radiant heart, be with the oil. Could we get one more round of applause for this beautiful children's choir? Thank you. <laughs> Thank you so much. Good evening, everybody, and welcome. What a beautiful crowd. Um, on behalf of the Baha'is of Austin and our sister communities in Central Texas, we welcome you tonight to a special celebration of the 200th anniversary of the birth of the Bob, the Herald of the Baha'i Faith. Starting tonight through October 30th in countless settings and places throughout the world, there will be celebrations commemorating the Bob, his life and his revitalizing message and teachings of a new dawn of humanity. We are delighted that you're here with us tonight. Thank you for being part of a celebration of the oneness of humanity, mutual respect, and feelings of goodwill between the diverse peoples of the world. Let's begin. A letter from the Universal House of Justice to all who have come to honor the herald of a new dawn. Dearly loved friends, consider with us whenever a divine educator appears in the world, a figure whose teachings will come to shape human thought and action for centuries thereafter at such a dramatic seismic moment. What would we expect? The appearance of every such educator as recorded in the sacred texts of the world's great faiths is a pivotal event that propels the advancement of civilization. The spiritual stimulus each has provided throughout history has enabled the radius of human cooperation to extend from the clan to the tribe to the city-state, and to the nation. And each of these great teachers promised that in time another divine figure would appear whose advent should be anticipated and whose influence would reform the world. No wonder then that the coming of the Bob whose birth two centuries ago we now honor gave rise to unprecedented ferment in the country where he was born. The moment of his appearance, like the appearance of all such figures, precipitated the release of powerful spiritual forces. But there was no accompanying spectacle. There was instead a late evening conversation in a modest Persian dwelling between a student of religion and his youthful host, during which that host revealed that he was the promised one, the divine educator his guest had been seeking. Observe attentively, he remarked, might not the person intended be none other than I. 
It is this youth, the Bob, that we acclaim as the one who's coming after an interval of a thousand years to shed the light of divine guidance once again upon the human world. From this moment unfolded all that has since come to pass. The Bob's writings flowed profusely from his pen, disclosing profound truths, dismissing the superstitions that held sway in his day, urging the people to recognize the significance of the times, castigating the hypocrisy of their leaders and summoning the world to an exalted standard of conduct. O peoples of the earth, he declares in one of his major works, verily the resplendent light of God hath appeared in your midst, that ye may be guided aright to the ways of peace, and by the leave of God, step out of the darkness into the light and onto the far extended path of truth. His influence spread with extraordinary rapidity, reaching beyond the limits of Persia. Observers were astonished alike by the fast-swelling numbers of his followers and by their deeds of unsurpassed bravery and devotion. Accounts of the Bob's life, the swift arc it traced, and the tragic drama that ended it induced curious souls to travel to Persia and investigate further and inspired a range of artistic tributes to his person. The brilliance of the light of the Bob seems the more dazzling when set against the darkness of the social milieu in which he appeared. 19th century Persia was far removed from its glory days when its civilization was the envy of the world. Ignorance now prevailed. Senseless dogmas went unchallenged. Inequality was fueled by rampant corruption. Religion, the foundation of Persia's former prosperity, had become a body devoid of its animating spirit. Each succeeding year offered the subjugated masses only disillusionment and hopelessness. Oppression was complete. Then, like a spring storm, the Bob came to purge and purify to uproot the withered and spent customs of a wayward age and to wash away the obscuring dust from the eyes of those blinded by illusion. But the Bob had a special object in view. He sought to prepare people for the imminent appearance of Baha'u'llah, the second of the twin luminaries destined to bring new light to humankind. This was his most insistent theme. When the day star of Baha will shine resplendent above the horizon of eternity, he instructed his followers, it is incumbent upon you to present yourselves before his throne. If the teachings brought by Baha'u'llah are what will enable humanity to advance to the highest levels of unity, then one must search the soul for the right response. The multitudes who recognized the Bob were summoned to heroism and their magnificent response is recorded by history. Let everyone who is awake to the condition of the world and to the persistent evils that warp the lives of its inhabitants heed Baha'u'llah's call to selfless and steadfast service heroism for the present age. What else will rescue the world but the efforts of countless souls who make each the welfare of humanity their principal, their dominating concern?
O Son of Spirit, my first counsel is this. Possess a pure, kindly, and radiant heart, that thine may be a sovereignty ancient, imperishable, and everlasting. O Hijo del Espíritu, posee un corazón puro, bondadoso y radiante, para que sea tuya una soberanía antigua, impercedera y sempiterna. The sun that rose today over Austin, Texas, is the same sun that rose over a century ago on the village of Maku in a remote corner of Persia, where a fortress prison kept a new prisoner known as the Bab, which means the gate. It was the summer of 1847. The mountain at the edge of Maku rose high above the village and the prison fortress was set back in a pocket of the mountain, away from the open sky, where it was reached by neither rain, nor refreshing breezes, nor the starry heavens of night. The Bob was kept at Maku for nearly a year, in a, mud, in a mud-walled cell without even a lamp for light. He was there in the sweltering summer heat that baked the rocky mountain, and in the harsh winter, when water froze in droplets on his face as he washed. The Bob had committed no crime, nothing to warrant this banishment to a remote prison. The Shah who ruled Persia had wanted to meet the Bob and to hear his message, but the Prime Minister was afraid of losing his own political influence over the Shah. Because of his influence, the Bab was sent to Maku. In the village of Maku, at the foot of the mountain, the people were unaware of the Bab's claim to be a new divine educator, a messenger of God, although much of Persia had been stirred to life already by his message. 
The people of Maku had not yet heard about his mission to prepare the way for a second messenger of God. Baha'u'llah, whose teachings would illuminate the world. Two messengers of God in one lifetime, unprecedented, because humanity was about to step over a critical threshold and enter a whole new era, the maturity of humankind. It was the Bab, the gate, who by divine appointment was first to open the way. Despite the difficulties of Maku, the Bab let nothing deter him from revealing the word of God. Day after day, he revealed new divine teachings, 8,000 verses in all. And woven throughout were a myriad references to the great divine educator soon to appear, the promised one, Baha'u'llah. Though the people of Maku had not heard of the Bab's mission, what they did hear, coming from that prison in the pocket of the mountain, was the rich and melodious voice of the Bab, reaching out through the open window of his cell and down the mountainside as he chanted the verses while he wrote, verses of such soul-stirring beauty that the people were captivated. Surely this must be a holy man, they said to one another, and they would gather at the foot of the mountain each day to begin their day with a blessing from the Bob. The Bob was 28 years old. He would never again be free. Three years later, the prime minister would order his execution. But the faith he tried to extinguish would not die in time, the names of the Bab and Baha'u'llah would encircle the world, honored by people in every part of the planet. Let us go back for a moment to the idea of the maturity of the human race, an idea that we might find hard to believe. But we know as individuals that maturity does not visit us overnight on a particular birthday. In the same way, we should not expect maturity of the human race to come overnight in one historical moment. Though if we look, we can begin to see evidence of the process. Maturity by its nature is a, ri is a ripening process, the fruit of cycles and seasons. We know that the f in the physical world, the sun is the source of life for this process. The high writings tell us that the sun, the source of spiritual life, the everlasting, ever-shining sun, is the word of God. In every age, the word of God is the cause of the education of souls and of the enlightenment of hearts. The same life-giving sun, the word of God, has appeared from different dawning places from those pure and stainless souls who are the divine educators from age to age, some of whom we may not know, but others whose names are familiar, Abraham and Moses, Buddha, Krishna and Zoroaster, Christ and Muhammad, and now the Bab and Baha'u'llah. The stories of these holy ones may be different, yet they are also remarkably alike. Each one summoned humankind to embrace the light of God. Each one scattered the darkness of ignorance. Each divine messenger kindled love in the hearts of enemies and brought strangers together under one tent. Through the power of the word of God, each one generated a fresh new springtime of the inner world, which was also reflected in the advances and flourishings of civilizations. We are all too familiar with the signs of spiritual winter, the materialism, the hatreds and violence, the wars and catastrophes, the sun of reality so hidden that it seems to have gone for good. Yet we are destined to emerge from this desperate winter in every age as humankind responds to the messenger of God. Minds are developed, hopes brighten, Aspirations become spiritual, and the virtues of the human world 
appear with freshened power of growth. You are the witnesses of the dawn of the promised day of God, the Bob told his first disciples. As we join in celebrations throughout the world on this bicentenary of the birth of the Bob, we are called to free ourselves from old patterns that do not serve us well. We are inspired to take courage to enter a new springtime of the inner world. It is a deeply personal journey into the most sacred space, the point where religion begins and to which it all returns, the human heart. It is not our wish to lay hands on your kingdoms, Baha'u'llah assured the kings and rulers of the world. That which God hath reserved for himself are the cities of men's hearts. Each one of us decides in the private recesses of those inner chambers to whom we will at last entrust the keys of that sacred city. Tahere, the pure one, heroine, poet, feminist, martyr, theologian, revolutionary, disciple of the Bab. Tahere was the first female disciple of a prophet of God in the known history of religion. In the 19th century, in a dark corner of the world, during the decline of colonial empires, Tahere came to symbolize the message and teachings of the Bab. His break with the past traditions and superstitions, his call for spiritual and moral reformation, and the emancipation of women. A dazzling intellect and heroic in her courage, Tahere captured the imagination of her countrymen in a time where women were not valued and did not have a voice in society. During July of 1848, while her American sisters were inaugurating the suffrage movement at Seneca Falls Convention in New York, Tahere took her leadership position in a pivotal conference of the new religion in Persia, where she took off her veil in direct defiance of the cultural and religious practices of the day to signify the break from dogma and traditions of the past. She announced boldly to the astonished men gathered at the conference, this is the day on which the fetters of the past are burst open. Although she was one of the Bob's first disciples and corresponded with him regularly, Tahere never had the opportunity to meet him. In one of her most famous poems, she imagines what that meeting would be like.
Blessed art thou, O night, for through thee was born the day of God and the dawning place of joy and exaltation unto all creation. Through thee the choice wine of everlasting life hath been unsealed. The doors of knowledge and utterance have been unlocked before the people of the earth and the breezes of the all-merciful have been wafted over every region. All glory be to that hour wherein the treasure of God, the all-powerful, the all-knowing, the all-wise, hath appeared. O concourse of earth and heaven, this is that first night which God hath made to be a sign of that second night, whereon was born he whom no praise can be fittingly extol and no attribute describe. On this night, the fragrance of nearness was wafted and the portals of reunion at the end of days were flung open and all created things were moved to exclaim, the kingdom is God's, the Lord of all names, who has come with world embracing sovereignty. On this night, the concourse on high celebrated the praise of their Lord the exalted, the most glorious, and the realities of the divine names extolled him who is the king of the beginning and the end in this revelation. At this time, we would like to recognize our special guest for tonight, Allison Alter, Councilwoman Alter is a member of the Austin City Council representing District 10. Allison is a friend of the Baha'is and would like to share a few words. I believe she also has a gift.
for us tonight that uh, she would like to present to the Spiritual Assembly. So if all will come up at this point, the Assembly and Allison. Good evening. My name is Allison Alter, and it's my privilege to represent District 10 on the Austin City Council. It's my honor to be here tonight on behalf of the city of Austin to commemorate the bicentenary of the birth of the Bob and to celebrate the Baha'i community here in Austin. The Baha'i faith has over six million followers worldwide. In Texas, Baha'i reside in over 300 locales with Baha'i communities in central Texas, including in Austin, Round Rock, Pflugerville, Cedar Park, Lakeway, San Marcos, just to name a few. I was fortunate to learn about the Baha'i faith as a young girl growing up near Chicago. I visited the house of worship on a regular basis and remember um, driving by and seeing that beautiful, beautiful place silhouetted against a bright blue sky, often with orange and red foliage. I had the honor of sharing that place with my family when we would visit uh, my mother and my brothers there. And I just remember that place as a place that inspired me as a young child. I had an opportunity uh, in the last few years also with my family to visit the Lotus Temple. And again, I had an opportunity to feel how that space really echoed the teachings of the Baha'i about being part of a larger humanity. And in those spaces, you feel that just like tonight with all these people here, we can feel closer um, to one another. The Baha'i teachings resonated with me as a small child. And today in the interesting times that we live in, they're even more important. The Baha'i teachings ask us to recognize the humanity of all, to care for our earth, to integrate and uplift our community, and to strive for peace. These values matter and are very much needed today. I want to share a little bit of the history of the Baha'i in Austin because I think it really um, helps us to reflect on the importance of the Baha'i community and of the teachings. In Austin, the history of the Baha'is is linked with civil rights and includes some very important champions of equity embodied by Anna Renke, Louis Gregory, and Heyman Sweat. Their stories help us to understand the foundations on which the Baha'i faith in Austin uplifts our own community. Anna Reinke, a white woman, became the first Baha'i in Texas in the early 1900s and is considered the mother of the Baha'i community in Texas. In 1920, Anna Reinke received fellow Baha'i Mr. Louis Gregory, who arrived in Austin, Texas for speaking engagements on race unity at Houston Institute, Tillotson College, and Anderson High School. Mr. Gregory was a successful U.S. government attorney in Washington, D.C., one of the Talented Tenth, the group of young men who formed the Niagara Movement dedicated to improving civil rights and access to education for black people in America. He had chosen to become a Baha'i and channel his energies in life in a new direction, to travel the United States, particularly the South, and work for racial amity. Because Anna, a white woman, attended Lewis's talk at the all African American Anderson High School, it became one of the first integrated meetings in Texas. In 1950, Heyman Marion Sweat, a Baha'i, became the first African American to be admitted to the University of Texas School of Law as a result of the Supreme Court decision in Sweat versus Painter. His efforts helped pave the way for the integration of predominantly white universities in the South. The Sweat versus Painter decision in turn led to the 1954 ruling in Brown versus the Board of Education, which desegregated schools across the country and opened the University of Texas at Austin to black undergraduates in 1956. The first local spiritual assembly of the Baha'is of Austin was formed in 1960. There were three African Americans on the first assembly. 
It was difficult to get facilities for interracial meetings at the time, but the hotel manager of the Stephen F. Austin Hotel was married to a Baha'i, so he allowed them to meet there. This brief glimpse of the Baha'i in Austin reflects the Baha'i teachings. The Baha'i believe in the oneness of the human race, the celebration of unity in diversity, equality of men and women, harmony of science and religion, and a personal dedication and commitment to one's community and service. So I would like to now offer a proclamation on behalf of the city of Austin in honor of the Bob. Be it known that, whereas the Bob, born Syed Ali Muhammad Razi, the herald of the Baha'i faith, opened the path for Baha'u'llah to bring teachings of peace and justice to unify the diverse peoples of the world, and whereas the Bob taught the essential spiritual and sacred relationship between God, the world, and our fellow human beings, and sacrificed his life for these ideals, and whereas the Bob's teachings influenced millions of Baha'is and their friends around the world and in Austin, Texas, now therefore, I, Allison Alter, on behalf of my colleagues on the City Council and the Mayor of the City of Austin, do hereby proclaim October 28, 2019, as Austin Baha'i Day. Councilwoman Alter, can we stand and honor our Councilwoman for being here with us? And we have a gift for her, the Shrine of the Ba in Haifa. We have a gift from the Boston community for her. Allison, this is for you. Dear friends, we're going to end with a prayer, um, and we're going to give everyone a moment to leave the stage, and we're going to end with a devotional, and after that, what birthday party is a birthday party without birthday cake? So we're going to have cake and coffee, and there's going to be another showing of the movie, if you missed it. It's going to be at 9.15 upstairs in the Texas Spirit Theater. We hope that you found the program uplifting. We hope that you feel inspired. We hope that you have a beautiful holy day with love from the Baha'i community in Central Texas. Thank you for being here with us tonight. We're going to have a prayer to end. When times get hard And my heart has lost its fire I pray to my God, my adored one, my desire when times get tough and my soul has lost its flame, I pray to my God and I call out his name, my God, my adored one, my king, my desire, what tongue can voice my thanks, voice my thanks to thee my God 
My adored one, my king, my desire, what tongue can voice my thanks, voice my thanks to Voice my thanks to thee.